Well, welcome to another Watercolors Aquarium Gallery video. And again, you're stuck with just me. And I'm gonna warn you guys, this is part one of a three-part series, and it's going to get pretty techy. And uh, I'm gonna apologize in advance for that, but this is a topic that I think requires to get into it a little bit, um, just because that's kind of the nature of it. Is. So, this topic is alkalinity, magnesium, calcium. Why do they matter? And how do you dose them and test for them, etc. So, part one is going to be more or less talking about alkalinity and calcium, and why they're important and how to test for them. Part two is going to be your options for dosing them. And then part three is going to be nothing but magnesium because I genuinely think magnesium is the most underrated or underappreciated major ion that is used in coral growth. So I think that one by itself deserves its own thing. So let's start off with why is it important? Well, so this is a diagram of just some live rock, a little coral, and then the little blue dots are calcium and the little red dots are um, carbonate ions, which is alkalinity, but I'll get to that. So water naturally, well, seawater, naturally has calcium and magnesium dissolved in it. And live rock is predominantly calcium carbonate, so it's got this little structure in it. And then so are corals. So tracking and dosing and understanding the relationship of alkalinity and calcium in water is important because so the coral skeleton is made of calcium carbonate. That does not mean that it, once it has a piece of calcium carbonate in it, it stays there. So this is a little zoom in here. So this is a calcium ion that's kind of being exchanged with the water around it. And that's because in seawater, calcium is super saturated, so it doesn't really have a stable relationship. Keeping track of your pH, your alkalinity, and calcium is important because as long as your parameters are good, it favors the coral skeleton being able to grab onto these ions and keep them. But if your pH or your alkalinity or your calcium gets too low, you're gonna reach a point where the chemistry no longer favors the coral skeleton hanging onto those ions. And if they get really low, they'll actually start dissolving back out into the water because now the chemistry has favored going in the other direction. So I'm gonna start off with what are your ideals? Uh, calcium, your ideal should be like 425, anywhere from 400 to 450 is really good. With magnesium, like 1350 is your ideal, and then like 13 to 1400 is good. With pH, you really want to be shooting for 8.4. If you're a little bit below that, you're okay, but 8.4 is the ideal. The ideal alkalinity is actually kind of debated. So natural seawater is, uh, has a DKA of, DKH of 8. Uh, most reefers keep theirs at like 9, and then some of the more experienced reefers will go as high as like 10 or 11. Uh, that can present some problems because if you go too high, you're actually going to bleach your corals. But if you're not experienced and capable of running that razor's edge, uh, just stay at 9 or 10. Like, that's, that's better um, until you get more experienced. So then, my next thing is, well, how do I keep track of it? So here we use the Red Sea kits. Uh, they're little titration kits. They can be tedious when you're doing multiple systems in one sitting, but they're little titrations. Uh, so like a kit like this does 75 tests and they're really accurate. What's really nice about them is that you can get, depending if you're doing the alkalinity or the calcium test, you can be as accurate as like five parts per million or like with the alkalinity, it's gonna be like a couple hundredths of a milligram per liter. And that's really useful information, especially when you have that information paired with what's your calcium, what's your magnesium, and what's your alkalinity at. And I always tell people, if you're dosing something, you should be testing it because the risk is you 
the risk is overdosing, which is the big deal. Because just like anything in life, too much of anything is bad. Uh, whether it's water or, you know, calcium, it, it's possible. So I'm just encouraging people to maybe make that leap a little bit. Uh, the nice thing about it is, is that if you're testing and dosing and keeping track of stuff, that means over time you get information like, so what's my usage of calcium? What's my usage of magnesium? What's my usage of alkalinity? Because, like, those have a relationship with each other, and you might not be using your alkalinity and your calcium and the magnesium at the same rate, depending on what kind of holes you have. So being able to know, look back on and see, oh, I'm using more calcium than average, and being able to adjust that or keep track of, oh, well, this type of coral in my tank grows better if I'm dosing this a little bit high, or it just gives you a lot of options. And honestly, like I know a lot of people are gonna watch this for the first time and they're gonna be thinking, oh man, this sounds so complicated. But I would argue that in some ways, keeping track of calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium is actually less work than keeping planet aquariums and keeping track of iron, potassium, and all that other stuff. Because the nice thing is, even though these are different chemistries that you're working with, the fun part is, is that the answer is always either I have enough or I don't. Where, like, that's it. Whereas with planet aquariums, it's a little bit more, I think, intuitive to some people, but the answer isn't always, oh, I have too low potassium or I have too high of this. It's, it's entirely dependent on what kind of plants you have. And those types of plants, there's a lot of them to deal with. And some plants are very specific, whereas corals are, if the alkalinity or the calcium is too low, they have problems. Or, and some are just more stringent on that. Like, let's say a Kenya tree coral cares a little bit less about whether or not the calcium and magnesium and stuff is too low, but it still cares. And then something like an acropora, it really cares. But the answer is always, even though with that entire swath of coral diversity, it's just, do I have enough or not enough? That, that's it. That's the question you answered. So I'm hoping that this is a little bit encouraging to people watching it and maybe a little less intimidating because I think I'm actually really starting to get into inverts now and I would encourage people to just look into it and maybe have a little bit more fun, try something new and keep their hands wet. <laughs>